So recently, as most of you probably know, Dragon Ball Fighters finally got its rollback update. And it wasn't good. I was so hyped to make a video on Fighters. I was so ready. I cleared my schedule. I figured everything out. I look at the game and it's not working. And this made me really upset. I've been waiting for this for two years at this point. Hell, technically even longer if we count when I wanted rollback. And while I looked at the twitching corpse of Dragon Ball Fighters, it reminded me of another game that came out and didn't quite meet my expectations. Undernight in Birth 2 is not a bad game. I don't know how much I have to stress this. I do like Undernight in Birth 2. However, when the game came out, it came out in an unpolished, unacceptable state. You literally could not play online, unless you were lucky, of course. Because of this, I made a pretty harsh video when the game came out, talking about how the PC port of Undernight was dog shit. I never wanted to just write the game off as crap that nobody should play though. Like I said, I like Undernight. So seeing Dragon Ball Fighters fall from grace with a terrible rollback update made me think, maybe I should give Undernight another look. See how it's going, see what's happened. How is the Uni2 PC port one month later? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about Undernight in Birth 2 and how they actually fix the PC port. So let's start with the biggest thing that they fixed. Let's start with the biggest problem that we had. They actually did it. You can play online matchmaking and the game doesn't fucking crash anymore. Yippee! Granted, the online matchmaking still is not 100% consistent. There are times where you will try to queue into someone and it just won't work. But considering the fact that I would try to queue into anyone ever at all and the game would crash, I'll take this. This is a massive step up, which is a shame to say, because it's still not perfect. Apart from that, the ping indicator is now much better than it was before. If you do not remember, it used to say that your ping was massively inflated compared to what it actually is. Now, I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate, but it feels a lot better and a lot more true to what actually is happening in the match. The game is generally just way more stable with a lot less bugs. You'll no longer get weird bugs where all of your buttons will be pressed at the exact same time for no fucking reason when you boot into the game, causing you to restart your PC, I hope. You can edit the settings and the settings will actually change when you boot the game back up. The FPS issues that some players were having seem to have gone, but that doesn't mean that everything is sunshine and roses. There's a terrible glitch that's still in the game to this day. One that ruins the entire integrity of the franchise. If you tab out during the single player cutscenes, it still restarts the cutscene. You know what, this one's funny, it can stay. So thankfully it seems that the game actually works now. Or at least works a lot better than it did before. I cannot express how infuriating it was on launch weekend to have the game not work, but hey. I can finally actually play Undernight online. And this isn't like it took them a month to fix it. The Undernight devs were actually pretty fast about some of these updates. And they have still been updating the game to this day. In fact, as of recording, they actually just put out an update on March 1st. Meaning that they're still committed to making the PC port as good as it possibly can be. Hopefully this will be enough to make more people actually try the game again. It seems like the player count is a little bit low, but these things happen, and hopefully the community will flock back to the game and Undernight won't have to be a Discord fighter for the rest of its life. But how is the actual game? I didn't exactly get to talk about it in my rent when the game came out. Do I like Undernight in Birth 2 on a gameplay level? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I do. It's very fun. Despite having a number next to his name this time, Undernight in Birth 2 is very similar to the rest of the Undernight in Birth games. In fact, you could say that it's more of a title update than it is a full-fledged sequel. If it wasn't for the rollback, I imagine they wouldn't actually have a 2 next to his name. All of the characters retain their old moves, and a bunch of them get completely new moves to mess around with. The grid system works basically the same as it did before, and it's as funky as ever. You still have the sub game of fighting for the grid war with the back and forth that happens with that. You still have a lot of in-depth decisions that you need to make based on where the cycle currently is and who has more grid. Honestly, this has been the coolest mechanic to actually play around with in any fighting game that I played recently. Having to change my pressure, change my mix-ups, change my defense, hell, change my general mindset around the game because I know that the cycle is about to end is a really fun 
one mechanic. If you don't know, this gauge at the bottom of the screen is the grid gauge, and around every 12 seconds, a cycle completes. When a cycle completes, it checks to see who has the most amount of grid in the grid gauge. That player wins the cycle and is granted Vorpal State. Vorpal State is a state in which you deal more damage and are able to cash out your grid for meter, as well as slowing the game down, not unlike a Roman cancel. In fact, it's so not unlike a Roman cancel that you can straight up cancel several moves with this. Having grid and Vorpal means that you have entirely new strategies based on the new meter and the not Roman cancel that you get. The way that you build and spend grid is extremely important in this game. And figuring out the best ways to use your grid and gauge is the most fun bit of the game. For example, the character I play, Sarugi, relies heavily on his B plus C attack. That attack actually spends part of the grid gauge, meaning that every time you go into shield stance, you lose a little bit of grid. The benefits are pretty massive though. You gain invincibility to all overhead and mid attacks as long as you are not doing a move, as well well as gaining access to a fast overhead at a far advancing low. Every time you want to go into this stance, you have to make the decision on if you think it is worth it to spend that grid or not. If it's near the start of a cycle, you can probably get away with it pretty easily, but if it's near the end, you have to actively figure out if spending that grid is going to lose you Vorpal. And trust me, you do not want to be on the receiving end of losing Vorpal. This is easily the most fun and most in-depth part of the game, but the best bit is your opponent is also thinking about Vorpal, meaning if you want to be an absolute gigabrain, you can try to figure out what your opponent is thinking about with their grid and counter that. Maybe you can see that they're shielding a lot of your attacks and are building a lot of grid because of that. And it's near the end of the cycle. So instead of going for another attack, you go for a throw to not only grid break them, but force them to lose Vorpal. Maybe they're trying to make space so that they can charge in order to steal Vorpal out from under you. So because of that, you charge Vorpal back yourself. Or just say fuck it and run at the opponent. Maybe you know that your opponent is so focused on the grid war that you just kill them. It doesn't matter if you win grid if you lose the game after all. These systems combined with the in-depth combos, the crazy character mechanics, and most importantly, the fun and fast gameplay make Undernight in Birth 2 one of the most fun fighting games to play in my opinion. And now you can see why I was pissed that the game wasn't working. I have zero notes on the gameplay front. The gameplay of Undernight in Birth 2 is really fun. And if I'm entirely honest, that's all I ever wanted from Undernight. Undernight in Buff was an amazing fighting game that was locked behind terrible, terrible delay-based netcode. So having it be actually playable online with rollback just makes it good. Undernight has always been good. It's always been there, and it's always been fun. Now you can actually just play it online. The new additions to the cast are all very cool as well. I am very partial to Sarugi myself. I love him. He's absolutely amazing, even if he is kind of mid. But being able to bash people in with a giant shield and just deny projectile pressure is really fun, even if the player base has started to figure out ways around it. I honestly cannot think of anything negative I have to say about the game. I'm just happy that the game is finally in a playable and accessible state for people on PC. If you haven't played Undernight on PC since it came out, I recommend going back and giving it a shot. Mainly because now that it actually works, you can play the game and see what it really is. It's not a perfect port. I still have problems with the matchmaking. I hate the quick and custom search. It really makes it seem like you get to pick and choose your matches or you just let the game decide. And well, let's be real, 99% of players are gonna pick and choose their matches no matter what, but that's a problem I have with basically every French bread game. It was a problem in Type Lumina, it's a problem in this game. Apart from that though, Undernight in Buff 2 is a good game, and I'm glad that we can finally actually play it. In fact, I'm so glad that we can finally actually play it, that I'm going to be doing viewer matches tonight on my stream, and it was definitely my choice. We're doing a new thing on the Twitch streams where we roll a wheel to see which game we're doing for viewer matches weekly, and Undernight managed to take it away, so that with the Dragon Ball Fighters fiasco made me realize that I should check this game out again. So if you like Undernight in Birth 2 and want to beat my ass for the things that I said before on the game, come over and play. It'll be a good time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next week. As always, a very special thanks to 64 Megahertz, Almost Nap Time, Ben from Canada, Savantis de Leon, Daniel Wiederich, Edison Luddery, Fexo, Games.png, I am Naoto, Knife and Spoon, Critty Cat, 
MP04, Mr. Clem, Ray W, Sergeant Cubby, Super, Falcon, Tom Tanks, Velvet Puppy, Volta, and Zandatsu for being tier 2 patron supporters. 